Greetings, this is July 1st, and one thing I can never overestimate is the speed at which a wildfire will travel. This is an image from a friend of mine up in the Caribou showing an ominous sky with the sun in the background, but that is smoke. We'll come back and look at what might be the cause. But first, let's jump over to BC Wildfires one page and then take the link to the map. We are looking at the fire around Lytton. That's in the center of the screen. There's an indicator there that a wildfire is occurring and the perimeter that you see right in the middle, that is the George Road fire. It is apparently not what is affecting Lytton at this time, but there is fire in the town. It is an interface fire. If you need more information on the evacuation orders, the evacuation alerts, you can go to the TNRD link. It's going to be in the description below. They have an evacuation status dashboard and a link to a map. I wasn't able to get this working for me, but uh, I'll make sure it's in the description and you can try it out. Another resource you'll want to have handy is Drive BC. You'll be able to look at webcams and find road alerts. Here we're looking at Highway 1 from Boston Bar up to Spence's Bridge. It is now closed. There is an active wildfire in there. It's affecting the town of Lytton and it's currently blocked off. So you'll have to plan a better route if you've got to go north or south in that region. What we can do is go to the Fire Information Resource Management System. This is put out by NASA. The link is below. And we can see infrared on the MODIS system that's displaying a little bit better than the VIIRS system. The MODIS is a larger red dot. It covers a larger area, so it's not as accurate, but it's displaying despite any smoke and clouds better than the VIRS right now. We can also see that the infrared is displaying north of the highway. It appears to have crossed the highway and there is a mountain on the other side. Running straight up the center is the Fraser River. This is where the Fraser joins the Thompson. It's very rugged terrain. The uh, river is far below the highway and there are parks and uh, recreational sites all along the Thompson River up to Spence's Bridge. I do not know the status of Lytton. I've heard anecdotal reports of structures on fire and there is an evacuation order. We are looking at a screen from Windy showing that the wind direction is from the southwest. It's moving to the northeast at about nine kilometers an hour. That's fairly brisk. Looking at the forecast, the wind speed varies between five kilometers an hour, 10 kilometers an hour. And the wind direction is primarily from the south. It shifts from the southwest to the southeast. It will be changing and that's going to affect uh, how the fire progresses. The forecast on Windy is also showing that speeds could pick up on Sunday and Monday, reaching 14 to 17 kilometers an hour. Let's go over to lightningmaps.org. The link is in the description. Here's that swath of lightning that traveled up from south of Vancouver Island into the central interior up to Prince George and finally ended up on the other side of the Rockies with absolute coverage of lightning. The map has 24 hour and real time lightning strikes. Here we're looking at real time to the northeast of Prince George. The red dots are older, the yellow dots are the most recent, and just an incredible amount of electrical intensity on the other side of the Rockies south of Fort Nelson. I also want to take a look at the Interlakes area. Here we can see could be as many as a hundred strikes uh, stretching from Green Lake up above Canham Lake. The issue is that these strikes, if they make contact, may not appear as a fire immediately. They may smolder for several days. So you want to be on the guard and watch for 
plumes of smoke and uh, any changes in wind direction and wind speed because uh, they could pop up. We are looking at the infrared right now. We can see hot spots that are showing in amongst all that smoke and a little bit of cloud cover. Uh, the cloud cover may increase and that's going to limit our ability to see those infrared hot spots. So that's where eyes on the ground are very valuable. We've zoomed into the Interlakes area. We can see a hot spot to the northeast of Green Lake. We can see several north of Sheridan Lake approaching Decca. We can also see one to the northeast of Horse Lake. So with the wind direction flowing from the south to the north, if you're north of those hot spots, you want to be concerned that uh, the, you're aware of the terrain, the vegetation between you and the fire line, and what your access routes are, and any preparations that you need to make, do them now. Another aspect is that the winds are shifting. They may come from more westerly direction. They may shift and start coming from the north slightly. There's a variety of weather patterns. They're circling. So it's the wind direction is not a guarantee. We've zoomed out again. We're looking at the province. I'm not seeing a lot of infrared in the central interior. However, when a lightning storm goes through, it can take hours or even days before fires start to emerge. They can smolder for quite a while. One of the features of the firm's website is the ability to use different filters to get a better view of the terrain and vegetation. Here we've zoomed in to the fire at McKay Creek, Sparks Lake, and south we have the fire at Lytton. That movement of smoke is primarily from the southeast to the northwest. So in such a concentrated area surrounding Cache Creek, Lillooet, and Clinton, you want to be very aware of your access routes. In this image, I have both the VIIRS and the MODIS turned on. The MODIS is more orange, the VIIRS is red, the MODIS is more recent. So we can see expansion and what looks like controlled infrared signatures. And it does appear that the fire has crossed over Dead Man Vedette Road and is now up on the other side at the plateau. One thing to consider is that to the northwest, a lot of that area was burned in 2017. So that may provide a buffer and hopefully slows down the fire's approach. We're now moving westward to the fire that started at Pavilion and going just by the infrared on the screen, it appears to have crossed the Fraser River. Some of those areas on the east side of the Fraser were burned out in 2017. However, with the ever-changing wind patterns and swirling action, it's difficult to tell which direction the fire will proceed. The flag on Windy is showing seven kilometers an hour coming from the southwest, but you can see in this imagery that the wind directly north is coming from the northwest. Clicking the arrow on the flag will show us the forecast. The wind speed looks to remain relatively slow. However, it's changing directions throughout the week into the weekend. And if we zoom in on Saturday at 5 p.m., it looks like wind gusts from the north at 14 kilometers an hour. So even if I'm south of that location, I still want to be concerned about these wind shifts. Collect the data, analyze the forecast, plan your access routes, and prepare ahead of time. If I could pass on a message, what I've learned is that fire can be spontaneous and can occur with very little notice. So be safe, everyone. Keep your nose to the breeze. Watch out for each other. Thank you.